So Mammoth Resources, uh, it's an exploration company. Um, its assets are in Mexico in the Sierra Madre, the prolific Sierra Madre. Remember Humphrey Bogart, treasurer of the Sierra Madre? Um, actually, I'm just gonna point the uh, picture on the right, pertinent to the points that were just discussed, is um, some free gold that was uh, panned from one of the streams that run off of our property. So I'm the president and CEO, but I'm joined by a really good, uh, small, but very well experienced uh, team. Um, total, we've got 100 years of experience. Uh, our vice president of exploration, Richard Simpson's worked for major cap companies. And um, he lives in Mexico, he's married a Mexican woman, and, uh, and so really um, invested in Mexico and in our property. Um, see some of our other management there. Um, see the gold price on, the, on your left and then our share price. Uh, we've come down with the gold price. Um, actually, you had somebody sell on Friday about $600 worth at four cents. Um, we've traded up to eight cents over the past 10 days since the announcement of our project uh, being optioned by Centera Gold, close to a $2 billion company. Um, it took six months to sign that agreement, um, announced December 20th. Um, we haven't really been out marketing. This is our first opportunity in that. And um, if you look at how much they're prepared to invest, which is US 9 million, Canadian 12 and a half million, to earn up to a 70% interest, the implied value of our stock from that would be about uh, Canadian 5 million. And we're trading right now at that four cents at about 1.2 Canadian million. So we think there's good uh, potential. Um, it's a tight share structure. We have only 30.7 30 million shares outstanding. And um, yeah, so that's a summary of that. Um, so why invest in Mammoth? Well, we have a huge 15 square kilometer gold footprint on our property. And so um, that's about five kilometers by three kilometers and it's open to the east and the west. Um, we're seeing signs as much as six kilometers by this three kilometer area. Um, it does have drilling and in fact it's that we had the courage to go out and drill the property last year and those results which attracted Sentara to make their investment into the property. Uh, we were visited by one of their PhD geologists and he was ecstatic about what he saw in the drill core and the results that we achieved and um, some of which have been highlighted there. So you'll see uh, on the higher grade side of things, 3.7 meters grading uh, five and a half gram per ton gold. And then um, there's uh, five and a half meters at five gram, 23 and a half meters at 1.3 and 58 meters at 0.8 gram per ton gold. So some really terrific intersections sporadically drilled over about four kilometers of this five to six kilometer trend. Um, again, recently signed this option agreement with Sentara. Uh, we're fully funded in exploration up to the point of uh, pre-feasibility study and, um, and a mineral resource being defined. Um, it's a tight capital structure, as I pointed out earlier, we're only 30.7 million shares outstanding. And again, the implied value of the company relative to Sentara's commitment. And so the terms of the Sentara commitment outlined here, come to the booth, but basically it's US 5 million, um, Canadian 6.6 .6 for a 51% interest. And then um, to take that to 70% interest, it's US 4 million expenditure. Um, and we'll also be paid about 900,000 US over the terms of the option. So let me introduce you to the project. So we're located in the prolific, as I say, the prolific Sierra Madre. Remember Humphrey Bogart, treasurer of the Sierra Madre. So we're down here in southwestern Chihuahua State. We can drive to the property from the east or the west. We can fly into the property on a commercial fixed wing aircraft that lands on a gravel airstrip about 20 minutes from the property. Um, there's water, there's electricity, but we don't have any big population. There's three subsistence farmers on the property, so we don't have any, we don't anticipate any social issues. Um, so yeah, just highlighting some of those, some of those points, and you can see the, um, there's the property there, and the airstrip, or the airplane there, in the close proximity. Um, we will have earned 100% interest as of the end of this year, with US $35,000 due in, in payments. It's a, uh, about a 5,333 hectare property. 
So here you can see the property. So there's the community there where the airstrip lies. And so we just go along this road to our field camp and then this roadway that goes up into the middle of the property. Um, zooming in on that, the areas of mineralization, it's these, this large sort of five to six kilometer area here where we've got three distinct areas that we've identified and explored. And then a little bit further to the west over here is, um, are some other opportunities. This is a high sulfidation system, and without going into deep on the geology, basically what you have is you have a, an intrusive magmatic body. It's, it's the heat source, and it's the source of the metals, and um, it generates a lot of volatile hydrothermal, hydro water thermal temperature that invades up into weaknesses in the shallower levels of the Earth's crust, and you can, uh, the high of the high sulfidation is highly acidic. So it actually replaces some of the other rocks in different stratigraphies um, that f prove as favorable sources. And what we see on the property, we're suggesting this may be the erosional level. And so we're seeing this type of mineralization to the east. And at the, in the west, when we're deeper in the system, due to just topography, six to 700 meters deeper in the system, we're seeing the potential of this porphyry source as well. And that, in particular, is what attracted uh, Centera. So that's the typical model of these high sulfidations. High sulfidations in this area, mulattoes, a four and a half million ounce deposit, and El Sazel, which was two and a half million ounces, are within close proximity, a couple hundred kilometers to our Tenerife property. This uh, illustrates that footprint that we spoke of. So about five kilometers by three kilometers. This is soil geochemical. So this is gold that was sampled simply in soils. The red denotes 0.2 grams per ton gold. And in an open pit heat bleach type deposit, 0.2 would be around your cutoff. And we're getting that kind of grades of gold simply in soils at the surface. So that's, it's a very, very anomalous footprint. This shows where the, the project had been drilled back in 2008. In 2008, it had been optioned from the same people we're optioning it from, which are a couple of Mexican prospectors, um, by a company called Masaparia. They drilled it, had great results. They reported on 10 of 15 holes of the first drilling, but it was in 2008. Global financial crisis came, they couldn't sustain their commitments, and they dropped the property. We picked it up in 2012 from the vendors who owed 45,000 US in back taxes, and they had given, given their 60-day notice. They either pay or they lose the property. So we were able to negotiate very good terms for the property. And you can see, they had some really good results. I mean, look at, look at some of these results here. Um, I, can't actually, I can't actually see them really well from here, but there's um, 4.7 meters of 45 gram per ton gold. Um, we've got some lengthy intersections here of you know, 30 meters at, at around a gram. These are really, really good results, especially in the first phase of drilling. Um, now, this shows where we've gotten some of our results, and um, this, these squares, the different colors, denote some of the grades that we've achieved. So the highest that we sampled from surface was 74 grams per ton gold. Um, and, that, and so in some areas, as much as 74%, 115 samples that we, that we sampled actually graded, giving us about a 1.56 gram, and that's just on surface. Uh, gold that occurs as free gold, and so being so, it's amenable to open pit heap leaching, which is a low capital cost and low operating cost way of recovering the gold. And, that, and here you can see the free gold grains on the uh, sulfide minerals. Um, we did some channel sampling, which led up to our drilling, had really good results. We averaged, um, we averaged um, of uh, 15 trenches, we averaged a grade of, of 1.56 uh, over 139 meters. Um, this shows where we did some of our drilling. Um, it's open, as I say, in a number of directions. And um, some of our drill results. We highlighted some of the better samples, or the better intersections in red, where we got tens of meters at potentially economic grades. 
Um, and this is a section that we've done. So after all of this work, as we've looked at our model, one thing that we've realized is that this is looking north and that if you look to the west, we're deeper into the system. And so our drilling has actually intersected what we believe is close proximity to this porphyry source. And so we believe that um, intersecting this, uh, this porphyry could, uh, could show enormous potential because that's the source of the gold that we're getting at shallower elevations. And then, of course, over in the east here, we've got more of that typical high sulfidation type rocks um, where we're also getting results. So bottom line, look, it's a really big footprint. We're getting gold ubiquitously over a 15 square kilometer area. We've attracted the attention of a major market cap company to invest in this property. People with highly educated and experienced geologists who are prepared to invest in this opportunity now, and we're trading at a pittance of what would be ascribed as the value based on what they're prepared to invest. So we're at booth 1035. I welcome you guys to come by and ask any other questions and, um, and consider Mammoth Resources. Thank you so much.